or self-conserving of charge, which really dimples the egg, then we might conclude that not only does technology need to go from explosion to implosion, but so does our practice of sexuality. <laughs> it's this turning inside out, which actually is the constructive moment. There's a, a great deal of spiritual significance to that charge split of the egg in terms of how Tantra then makes possible this relationship with essentially um, beings who have a higher voltage genetic material. You could think of Gabriel and the, and the, uh, and the Immaculate Conception of Mary and all those stories are actually stories of the skill to hold tantrically this charge envelope. Uh, tantra essentially means the ability to hold this blue fire in a field effect which then grows like an ultraviolet cocoon around the aura. Even as in the movie Cocoon, when he saw the high power of this gathering, cocooning of creative energies, he said, well, if this is foreplay, we're in trouble. I want to show you in this connection a couple more pictures here about how the growth path of the fetus then follows this particular pathway um, that the unfolding path of the fetus then again follows this golden mean spiral of phylotactic perfect unpacking. And so even you have this heart within heart on the, on the body of the fetus. And then another series of pictures here has to do with understanding how the same projective uh, emotion path among the glands actually feeds the surface of a soap bubble. So we're, remember we were talking about how the angle at which you could make dents or a dimple on the soap bubble membrane of the egg was actually the origin of the alphabet in that it was a measure of the tilt angles of the donut which could store spin on the surface of a bubble. So keeping a soap bubble alive is a matter of wetting your finger and knowing the tilt angle at which to add spin to it. So understanding the way in which emotions send spin onto cell membranes is helpful to understand how bliss sexual energy and bliss and bliss process in general create an immune system create an immune system by storing spin on the membrane so the way we draw it is that the harmonic cascade of coherent emotion feeds the cell membrane added foldedness it needs the membrane and the harmonic of the cell membrane the harmonic content or frequency signature is a lock and the harmonic content of the virus is a key and the immune system is whether the harmonics of the virus fit the harmonics of the membrane, whether the virus can embed or nest itself on the membrane to screw itself in. So very complete frequency harmonics, that is very inclusive experience of all possible emotions, great bliss density, create good cell membrane or soap bubble skins. And so AIDS did not happen in Africa until they stopped the bliss dancing, is the metaphor. And here we see a little picture of the difference between uh, coherence in a meditator and lack of coherence. That if we look at this chart, and I'm going to scroll to the left here just a little bit so we can see it better. See how these columns of brainwave coherence are associated with the moments of intentional relaxation where the health benefits of, in this case, transcendental meditation, but any form of meditation, are related to the coherence that onsets which is related to bliss. And this becomes what's called bioacoustic habitat theory, where coherent harmonics create the self-not-self -self membrane of a healthy forest. One species dies, the forest finds another species to fill the spectral niche, or signature sound works. It's braiding theory, harmonic cascade in the mind mirror, when the harmonic cascade of the healer and the healed create the same frequencies in the brain waves as we measured in the heart, then you get this maximum energy transference, which we're seeing with the heart link is a way to use biofeedback for marriage counseling, for group process, even for tantra, for, for tantra, for embedding. So this is the picture I wanted to get to here also on the screen where we're going to show this cascade of when people line up their glandular harmonics, they actually create a cascade where coherent human emotion is squirted into or feeds the land. This is what Gurdjieff meant by coherent emotion feeds the earth. This is how the aboriginals sent their feeling, their substance of we feeling, down the song lines 
And that added centering force you add to the wormholes, add added centering force, causing the wormhole, the little worm, to nest better centered inside the bigger worm. That's the focus function of when we send feeling down a song line, down a wormhole. We add the glue, which is the phase lock of the centering force, which is ultimately what creates bonding. So whether you have ionic or covalent bonding, short neighbors versus long neighbor bonding, the issue is always phase locking. Phase locking is alignment. Alignment is what's provided by the implosion of electrical focus that we call consciousness. So essentially consciousness adds the glue to the wormholes by creating the centering force. It's what makes the gravity. So how does that relate to the spiritual function of sexual energy and Tantra? Well, that's where it gets juicy. You see, <clears throat> once human electrical energy has been focused enough to make this cocoon, whether it's with one person in Kundalini or two persons in Tantra, this ultraviolet electrical cocoon, uh, in the presence of extreme sexual ener excitation, but in the absence of conventional orgasm, begins to feed and grow itself and ultimately becomes faster than the speed of light. Uh, we could discuss this story in the kind of romantic context of what's called Magdalene's Tantric Swoon. This was described in the hard-to-get book The Magdalene Mystery by Kent, but there's some allusion to the concept in uh, the other books on Magdalene, including I Remember Union and The Woman with the Alabaster Jar. Also, the book by Jesse Ayani, Codes of Light, about the Magdalene bloodline. At any rate, the point is that Magdalene's tantric swoon was essentially that as a trained, uh, we could say, uh, uh, trained in the arts of Tantra in, in her extended family with the Essenes, uh, uh, she was able to know the disciplines of how to hold this extreme charge that came with sexual bliss without conventional orgasm, you get this pumping of the ultraviolet in a cocooning effect. This was also described in uh, the Incunabula papers. Uh, you can find the Incunabula uh, description at um, the site map at danwinter.com. Basically, it was a series of time travel experiments that explicitly depended upon sexual excitation. Uh, and you could think of incunabula as being incubus, where incubus is a self-imploding uh, light cocoon, whereas succubus is one that's more parasitic. And in either case, the geometry of the self-feeding implosion creates a squirt gun through the speed of light. And if you can focus your inner eye as you see this, as any good cartoonist would know, good sex requires seeing stars. <laughs> And uh, in fact, that is truly what happens, that you begin to create a vehicle of light that allows you to penetrate through the speed of light and eventually uh, use the gravity center of the earth and then the gravity center of the sun as a series of slingshots for your attention. So this is ultimately how we will tell our grandchildren how we, uh, how we become stars when we grow up. <laughs> And as we get deeper, as we get ourselves more immersed in the discussion about Tantra and bliss energy, we'll discuss this relationship